Hey guys, this video is all about physiological reflexes that you need to know for both INESET and NEET PG. I've got you all the reflexes at one place, which has cardiac, pulmonary, gastrointestinal, micturition reflex and oculocardiac reflex. So I have prepared this uh, PDF uh, based on the previous year questions and the important reflexes which are most potential for the upcoming exams too. So let me explain you all the reflexes and give you some tips and tricks here and there to remember uh, these reflexes. So let's start with the cardiac reflexes guys. So firstly, there are three cardiac reflexes that you need to know. The first one being uh, basal gyrus reflex or the coronary chemo reflex and the second one is Cushing's reflex and the third one is brain bridge reflex. The first and second reflexes in this uh, cardiac reflexes are bradycardiac that means both of them have decreased heart rate. So let us understand what these reflexes are. So basal gyrus reflex or coronary chemo reflex is usually seen in MI patients, myocardiac ischemia patients. So the mediators for these reflex are serotonin, capsaicin, vertradin and phenyl biguanates. So once this question was asked, serotonin question was asked. So this acts as a mediator for this reflex and the afferent for this reflex is unmyelinated vagal C fibers. As already discussed in the previous videos, which is of nerve fibers classification. So C fibers are unmyelinated, right? So that is what is written, unmyelinated vagal C fibers. So the response finally is these two are bradycardiac, right? So you have decreased heart rate and decreased BP and apnea followed by rapid breathing. So look at here, apnea followed by rapid breathing is the response seen in basal gyrus reflex. And here one more point that I have written is regarding this J reflex, which is juxtapulmonary capillary reflex, which is one of the pulmonary reflexes and the vasovagal syncope or the reflex, these three reflexes, that is the J reflex, vasovagal syncope reflex and basal gyrus reflex, all three together have the same response, that is decreased heart rate, decreased blood pressure and apnea followed by rapid breathing. So this is the same uh, common response seen in these three reflexes. So I have written them at one place. Coming to the Cushing's reflex, uh, most of us know this reflex, like this is the most famous reflex and most frequently asked too. So it is seen in head injury patients in whom there is increased intracranial tension or intracranial pressure that leads to increased BP and decreased heart rate. So in Cushing's reflex, you have increased BP and decreased heart rate guys. Now coming to brain bridge reflex. Brain bridge reflex is the reflex in which there is remember like raised heart rate. In the brain you remember RAI like raised heart rate. So that uh, this reflex is having the response of increased heart rate. This brain bridge reflex is seen in hypervolemic states. So whenever there is increased fluid level, fluid overload in the body, more amount of fluid enters into the right atrium that causes increased fluid in the right atrium. So what happens here is there are some receptors called as low pressure baroreceptors or volume sensing receptors, volume sensing baroreceptors which are present in the right atrium. So these receptors sense the fluid overload in your body, like sense the fluid overload in the right atrium. So what does we expect? Like the compensatory mechanism will obviously be to uh, like decrease the load, right? So what happens is heart starts increased heart rate, like increased beating. So increased heart rate and decreased ADH. See guys, ADH is antidiuretic hormone, right? So ADH is antidiuretic hormone. Diuresis meaning loss of fluid from the body, right? So antidiuresis meaning uh, this antidiuretic hormone retains the fluid into the body. Now already there is hypervolemic state in this patient. There is hypervolemic state that is congestive cardiac failure patient. There is already a high load of fluid in the body. So what we need to do is we need to do more of diuresis. So we need to decrease this antidiuresis. That means decreased antidiuretic hormone is seen in this patient. And there is one more hormone called as atrial natriuretic peptide guys which is called as ANP so the term itself tells us natriuresis that means it increases the loss of fluid so we need to increase this ANP and decrease this ADH so that is what is given in the response so there is increased heart rate that is increased functioning of the heart and decreased ADH so that antidiuresis is decreased and increased natriuresis that is increased ANP so these are the three important reflexes from uh, heart that is CVS system which are basal gyrus reflex and uh, Cushing's reflex and brain bridge reflex. 
now coming to the pulmonary reflexes so pulmonary reflexes are four like in fact three only one is herring brewer and paradoxical reflex of head and jay's receptor reflex but this herring brewer is having two uh, divisions like inflation reflex and the deflation reflex right firstly let us complete this last one guys which is a j receptor reflex that i have already told you which is similar to the bezel jarish reflex right so look at here j receptor reflex is seen in pulmonary edema conditions and we, uh, in this pulmonary edema when there is the, this fluid accumulation it stimulates the receptor called as j receptor which is present in the pulmonary capillaries so that's why it is called as juxta pulmonary receptor j is for juxta pulmonary and what happens is this this receptor takes the senses and it sends to the afferent which is unmyelinated vagal c fibers so as a result it will be decreased heart rate decreased pp and rapid breathing so the first response is apnea like similar to this only apnea comes first and then the rapid breathing both decreases like bp and heart rate decreases so this is what is about j receptor reflex which is almost uh, in response wise it is similar to bezel jarish reflex now coming to this uh, herring brewer's inflation and deflation reflexes so look at here guys herring brewer's inflation reflex that means whenever there is over inflation of the lung this reflex comes into action so what happens is whenever there is a over stretch of the lungs that is the tidal volume of greater than 3 times the normal tidal volume so all of us know that the normal tidal volume is 500 ml whenever there is more than 1500 ml of tidal volume in the lung that causes uh, over stretch so that that is the stimulus for this reflex so the receptors are pulmonary stretch receptors which has slow adapting time so from there the afferent is large myelinated vagal fibers so for the j reflex it was at unmyelinated whereas for this herring brewer reflex it is myelinated vagal fibers so what happens is that since there is more of the inflation happening you need to decrease the air entry into the lung right so you need to decrease the air entry into the lung so what you need to do is decrease the inspiration and increase the expiration right so that is what happening like see in the uh, response here like the efferent carries the senses which decreases or inhibits the inspiration and increases the duration of expiration so it prevents the injury of the lung from over inflation so the final effect is it decreases or prevents the injury of lung from the over inflation which is regarding her herring brewer uh, inflation reflex now the exactly opposite thing happens in this deflation reflex so when the lung is uh, overly deflated like when the lung deflates too much then the pulmonary stretch receptors again carries the senses uh, again carries their senses to this large myelinated vagal fibers and that will cause increased inspiration right so increases the duration of inspiration and decreases the expiration that's uh, so that uh, this prevents the collapse of the lungs like in atelectasis conditions this reflexes comes into action so this explains you for uh, this in inflation and deflation reflex of herring brewer coming to the paradoxical reflex of head at the outset itself uh, look at this term guys paradoxical that means something opposite to the normal the typical mechanism so the paradoxical reflex of head is like there is hyperinflation of the lung but still uh, the response is increased inflation of the lung only like we usually expect that when there is a hyperinflation of the lung we want to deflate it but in since the term itself is telling it is paradoxical it's still inflating like the response final response is also inflation of the lung so when does this occur it is seen in the newborn's first breath condition so there are these pulmonary stretch receptors again but the difference here is in the herring brewer reflex there are slow adapting reflexes whereas in the paradoxical reflex of the head it is rapidly adapting pulmonary stretch reflex okay and the afferents are same the vagal fibers and this paradoxical reflex of head occurs in when there is first cry in the newborn so like when the newborn is born uh, the first breath that it takes over inflates the lung and it will the baby cries during the first breath and still the lung will be in the over inflated condition only so that more amount of air should enter into the lung and it should displace the fluid that got accumulated in the fetal lungs okay so the first cry in newborn increases the inflation of the lung so that it will replace all the fluid in the lungs with the air so this is the mechanism that occurs during the first breath of the baby or first cry in the newborn so these are the four reflexes uh, of the pulmonary or the respiratory system now coming to the git that is gastrointestinal reflexes so there are four that you need to know one is deglutition reflex 
second is enterogastric reflex third is defecation reflex and fourth is gastrocolic reflex and among this this deglutition reflex is most important and defecation reflex is also important but uh, when we discuss about this pulmonary and uh, cardiac all the uh, like three from cardiac and four from pulmonary all are important uh, whereas in gastrointestinal the defecation and uh, deglutition are important so let's know about deglutition reflex first the afferents are cranial nerve 5 9 and 10 and the center is medulla that is nucleus tractus solitarius so nucleus n for 9 and tractus t for 10 and solitarius s for 7 so 9 10 and 7 is the mnemonic here for nucleus tractus solitarius and the efferents are 5 7 and 12 so these are the muscles of pharynx and the tongue so that causes uh, that causes swallowing like deglutition is nothing but swallowing right so this is the reflex now coming to enterogastric reflex enterogastric reflex is under the control of local enteric system guys so the stimulus is unabsorbed carbohydrates fats and proteins in the duodenum that means uh, duodenum is in the hyperosmolar state right because the food is not absorbed into the body so there is more uh, amount of particles inside the stomach so or inside the duodenum so hyperosmolar state of the duodenum which causes decreased gastric emptying so this is so uh, easy guys see, see you have this star one second so you have this uh, stomach here and the duodenum right so food enters from stomach into the duodenum so whenever there is hyperosmolar state in the duodenum itself like the food is getting accumulated in the duodenum you should have the food stop from this uh, out outlet of stomach right so that's why it causes decreased gastric emptying so that more amount of food won't enter into the duodenum firstly the food which is present in the duodenum should be absorbed should be digested right so that is what is uh, enterogastric reflex so whenever there is a food accumulated in the duodenum part it stops the food from entering into the duodenum from the stomach gastric coming to defecation reflex guys so you have this internal anal sphincter and external anal sphincter right so internal anal sphincter is a smooth muscle so it is involuntary in action whereas external anal sphincter is skeletal muscle so it is voluntary in action now coming to the smooth muscle which is involuntary in action parasympathetic nervous system facilitates the defecation whereas sympathetic nervous system inhibits the defecation in the external anal sphincter which is voluntary in function it is under the uh, nerve called as pudendal nerve so one thing you need to remember here guys uh, every time this parasympathetic nervous system it always stimulates the uh, outflow from the body like it increases the micturition as well as it increases the defecation so this point helps you when i explain this micturation reflex okay so for now remember that parasympathetic nervous system increases or facilitates the defecation whereas sympathetic nervous system inhibits the defecation so look at here there is this distension of rectum with the feces so there are afferents which carry the fibers to the center the center here is sacral segments of the spinal cord so what uh, the center does is it stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system so it causes relaxation of internal anal sphincter then the relaxation of external anal sphincter via this voluntary mechanism that is pudendal nerve mechanism so that causes this defecation so involuntarily parasympathetic system activates the internal anal sphincter so it opens and then voluntarily by this pudendal nerve external anal sphincter opens so that uh, leads to defecation so this is about defecation reflex coming to gastrocolic reflex gastrocolic reflex used usually seen in infants so in infants they usually defecate immediately after taking food and this is mediated by the hormone called as gastrin so this was asked as a question once gastrin so the gastrocolic reflex is like whenever there is a food in the stomach of the infant it activates the colon so that uh, the food enters and into the colon and it gets excreted out so that is what is a gastrocolic reflex whenever there is food in the stomach it activates the colon that is like simple gastrocolic reflex now coming to the last page which is about micturation reflex as i already told you parasympathetic nervous system increases the micturation remember that point like it facilitates the micturation okay so look at here this is the bladder and here you have this uh, detrusor muscle and the internal sphincter and the external sphincter so look at this guys parasympathetic nervous system in order to increase the micturition it should contract this muscle right so this detrusor muscle should contract and this internal anal sphincter should be relaxed right so that the urine finally comes out so it 
parasympathetic nervous system which is S1 to S4 causes contraction of detrusor muscle but relaxation of internal anal sphincter. Whereas external anal sphincter is under voluntary control of Onuf's nucleus which is S2 to S4. So it causes contraction of the external anal, uh, sorry, external sphincter. This is like bladder, right? Sorry, external sphincter. Now there are few higher centers which control the micturition uh, for us. So facilitatory center is pons, whereas inhibitory is midbrain. So inhibitory IN is midbrain IN and the cortical center is paracentral lobule. So the lesion in the paracentral lobule leads to urinary incontinence. So in the homunculus diagram, when we draw, draw these uh, two hemispheres of the brain, we usually draw the bladder and the legs part here, right? So whenever there is a lesion in this paracentral lobule that causes urinary incontinence because the area represented for bladder is in the paracentral lobule. So whenever there is a lesion in that lobule, it leads to urinary incontinence and inhibitory is IN for midbrain and facilitatory is pons. These are regarding the higher centers. Now let us look at the reflex ones. Whenever there is urine in the bladder, like same like feces in the rectum, there occurs stretch and the afferents are there that carries the signal to sacral segments which is acts as the center and from there you will have this parasympathetic output which facilitates the uh, micturition right so in order to facilitate the micturition it need to contract this bladder that is detrusor muscle and relax this internal sphincter and under uh, favorable environmental conditions voluntarily this external sphincter is also relaxed which is under Onuf's nucleus function so that finally urine comes out. I hope uh, maturation reflex and defecation reflex are clear like both are similar only one is regarding food and the other is regarding urine. Now coming to oculocardiac reflex uh, this is something like not so important but I have got you so that you will have every reflex at uh, like in one sheet only. So oculocardiac reflex uh, the orbital contents will have the afferents. It carries the signals to the ciliary ganglion and from there ophthalmic division of fifth nerve to the sensory nucleus of the fifth nerve and the efferent is tenth nerve which is vagus to the heart. So in the heart it causes decreased heart rate, AV block and that might lead to ventricular ectopy or asystole sometimes. So look at here whenever there is traction on the extraocular muscles or pressure on the globe which causes decreased heart rate bradycardia, AV block and ventricular ectopy or asystole. So it is usually seen with medial rectus muscle traction, but any uh, orbital content also might cause this reflex. So the reflex arc involves orbital contents to ciliary ganglion, trigeminal now and the vagus now to the heart is the efferent. Okay. So this reflex occurs uh, when whenever there is uh, strabismus surgery in the pediatric age group is the most common and cataract extraction, e nuclei, like something, anything that is related to uh, orbital disturbance causes this reflex. So this is what is all about physiological reflexes guys. So the three cardiac reflexes, four pulmonary reflexes and four gastrointestinal reflexes, one micturation reflex and one oculocardiac reflex. I hope everything is at one place for you now. Please revise this PDF before your INISET exam. Thank you.